Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're continuing our research into AC theory and in particular the nature of inductive reactants. Now remember that is the opposition to current flow that is created by a coil when connected to an AC supply. In the previous video in this series we looked at how changing the frequency applied to the coil changed the inductive reactants or opposition to current flow inside that circuit. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at what happens when we vary the inductance of the coil and how that affects inductive reactance or the opposition to current flow in the circuit. What we're then going to do is we're going to tie all the information that we've seen in the previous video and in this video together to give us a really important mathematical formula that we're going to be using in an awful lot of our electrical science and it's a really really important formula to take into your exams with you to have in your head so that you know how to apply it when you get into the exam so stay tuned until that point in the video let's get started so just to recap we saw in the previous video that an increase in frequency has led to a reduction in current and if current is reducing the opposition to current flow must be increasing so we can see that clear relationship in an inductive circuit. If we increase frequency, we increase the opposition to current flow. So now we're going to swap out our inductive load for another inductive load. So again, although the chances of getting any kind of shock from this are absolutely minimal, we'll always make sure we're working as safely as we can. So I've now taken out the 47 millihenry value and I've put in a 200 millihenry value of inductor. So this has a higher value of inductance and all that means is that it is better at inducing current back inside itself. Now that's an important point because that will hopefully help you to understand what happens to the opposition to current flow when we power this back up again. So remember we have increased the inductance therefore this inductor is better at inducing current back in itself than this inductor was. So let's just think about it. When I put the power back onto the circuit, what do you think is going to happen to our current flow? Let's find out. So we've got our circuit back on. We'll switch our multimeter back on. So that's interesting. Can you see now what's happened to the current? The current has dropped. So again, let's work through that relationship. We've increased the amount of inductance. That has decreased the current flow. And we know from Ohm's law that if you decrease current, you must have increased the opposition to current flow. So therefore, by increasing the inductance, we have increased the opposition to current flow. And just to reiterate the point again, what's going to happen to the opposition to current flow as we increase the frequency? Let's increase the frequency. So now we're at somewhere around 100 hertz. And you can see there that the current flow is just starting to drop down a little bit. So as we're increasing frequency, we're reducing current. So we must be increasing opposition to current flow. Let's go to a much bigger value and you can see that once again the current flow has dropped right down again. So we've got those two very clear relationships in mind. In an inductive circuit, if you increase frequency, you increase the opposition to current flow. If you increase the inductance of the circuit, you also increase the opposition to current flow. So at this point in the video, what we need to do is we need to bring all this information together to create a new mathematical formula. And this is what we're going to record in our box on our worksheet. So the formula looks something like this. I'm going to give you the formula and then we'll break it down and look at the different things that are in it. The formula is XL is equal to 2 pi FL. Now, we've got a few different things in there, a couple of which we haven't actually mentioned yet. So we'll talk about uh, what those mean momentarily. First things first. The symbol at the start, XL, you'll notice it's a capital X and a capital L, but the L is in the subscript, and XL represents inductive reactants. The X is reactants, the L indicates that it is inductive reactants. We've then got this new part that we've just brought in seemingly out of nowhere, 2 pi. 
Now, we know that pi is a mathematical constant, and actually 2 pi is a very important mathematical constant. And if you think back to uh, perhaps your school days when you were looking into information about circles, that value of 2 pi might seem quite familiar to you because it's actually the way that you find the circumference of a circle, 2 pi r. So that mathematical constant 2 pi, you might be thinking, well, that's OK for circles. What has it got to do with AC electricity? Well, if you think back to the previous couple of videos in this series, when we were looking at how AC waveforms are generated, we saw that an AC waveform is generated by turning a conductor in a circular motion inside a generator. And therefore, we need to have that 2 pi piece of information to represent one complete revolution, one run around the circumference, if you like, of an AC waveform. So in this formula, that will always be the same. You will always simply have 2 pi as the mathematical constant. We then come on to the letter f. You'll notice it's a lowercase f, which hopefully by this point we know represents frequency. Frequency, of course, is measured in hertz, and we give it the unit symbol hz. And then finally, we've got the mathematical symbol capital L. We know that that stands for inductance, and we know that inductance is measured in henrys, and we give it the mathematical symbol h. Now, we've brought this formula into play, but as always, I think it's really important to get under the skin of the formula to try and think about exactly what it means. The reason that the formula looks like this, xl equals 2 times pi times f times l, is very simply because of the relationship that we saw in our experiment. We saw that if you increase frequency, you increase the opposition to current flow. Therefore, the frequency, f, is a multiplier. We also saw that if you increase inductance, how good the coil is at generating electricity back inside itself, we increase the opposition to current flow. So therefore, the inductance, L, must also be a multiplier. Just as a personal point, I hope everybody is seeing the value of these excellent electronics kits from Matrix TSL. They help to bring math, uh, mathematical and electrical science uh, to life in a way that is very, very difficult without very specific components to do that. So once again, we highly rate these pieces of kit. We think they're very valuable for learning, uh, and we hope that through the course of the videos that I've been creating, it really helps you to, uh, to understand that. So in this video, we've seen some really, really important information. We've seen the things that contribute to inductive reactants. Remember, that's the opposition to current flow created by an inductor. So now we can fill in this box in our worksheet and we're going to put in the formula of the things that contribute to inductive reactants and it looks like this. XL, bearing in mind that the L is capital but in the subscript, is equal to 2 times pi times F times L, where F is the frequency of the AC waveform and the capital L is the inductance of the coil that we've connected up. So that formula is really, really important and you may be expected to do some calculations with that in your exam. So try and get that down on a formula sheet, get it into your memory so that when you sit your exam, you've got it there ready to go. Remember, if we increase the frequency in an AC circuit, it increases the inductive reactance. In other words, it makes it harder for current to flow. And if we increase the inductance in the coil, if we increase L, it will also increase inductive reactance, thereby making it harder for current to flow around the circuit. Thank you very much for watching.